been searching down every dead end road. The only treasure it's called me ain't nothing but fool's gold. Hello everyone. I'm in the middle of a knife project. And a rather long acid bath revealed some interesting things about a forged blade of mine that kind of brings a little more light on the question of whether you believe a forged blade may or may not be stronger than a stock removal blade. Anyways, let me show you that clip. Okay, so I put that knife through an acid bath for about 24 hours to, to get rid of as much of the forged scale as I possibly could. Upon inspecting it when it came out of that acid bath, I see something that might explain for some of you that will get the question whether a forged blade is any better than a regular stock removal steel blade. Um, it, it shed some light onto that topic. Now I, I still cannot tell you for sure which ones are going to be stronger. There's a lot of details to consider what type of steel it is, how it was heat treated, and a variety of other factors. But I think it's worthy to consider what happens to the internal structures of the steel and the way they align themselves through the forging process. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So as we look a little closer at this blade after the acid bath, um, particularly up near the tip, you could really see how the atomic structure of that steel has been squished together. And it reveals itself with this kind of inner uh, wood grain type of structure to it where the atomic alignment has been shifted. Um, now you know I was grinding this knife in this direction so I didn't do this with my grinder okay but if you look there is a definite grain in that steel. Closer to the tip you get the more pronounced it gets. Um, you can even see the striations from my grinding over top of it going in the opposite direction. So I just realized I'm not giving you enough detail to make my point in this video. All steel has some sort of a structure in it, an internal grain type of structure. You know, anytime it comes from the factory, hot rolled, cold rolled, or whatever, you're going to have a grain structure to that steel, even if you don't necessarily see it all that well with your naked eye. So when you're forging it, you are realigning the grain structure. Like, treat this wood like it's a piece of steel, okay? You see a grain structure here. If you cut through it, okay, you expose this end grain, which is more susceptible to cracking. Now, obviously, if you're going to cut a piece of wood, you strike it on the end grain to split it. You don't strike it in the middle of the grain, okay? Well, steel, I would assume the theory is the same way. Now, if you expose an end grain, you create weaknesses in steel that you shore up by forging, because by forging, you hammer it into the shape you want without disrupting that grain structure. You just realign it into the shape that you are trying to get. Okay, back to my video. So based on this, I think it's, I think it's fair to, to make the argument. I'm not saying I agree with it, but I think it's fair to make the argument that a forged blade could possibly be stronger than a stock removal blade. Um, you know, I won't, uh, I'm not married to that opinion, and uh, it could certainly be shifted around by data that could be provided, but you know, I think it's fair for people that will make that argument. Something to consider. I'd be happy to hear your guys' opinions on whether you believe forged blades are potentially stronger than stock removal blades, or do you believe with the modern steels and heat treat techniques that it makes no difference at all? Anyhow, you can check out the rest of that video uh, which will be uploaded over the next few weeks to the completion of that blade and handle. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that little bell if you want to get notifications for new videos. Check you guys later.